for this lesson, we're going to be continuing on with our different factoring methods. So for today, we're going to be looking at equations in the form x squared plus bx plus c. In other words, we're looking at equations where our number in front of our x here is a 1. So in this case, we're looking at equations when a equals 1. And these steps that we're going to do only work when a equals 1. So moving forward, just be very careful that a equals 1 before you start using this method. So just as a reminder, so far we've looked at two different forms of quadratic expressions. So we have factored form, so when we've already factored it. So at this point, we've looked at common factoring and factoring by grouping. And then we have standard form which is where we have a x squared plus b x plus c. So just as a reminder, to go from factored form over to standard form, we're going to expand and simplify. And then to go from standard form over to factored form, that's when we factor. And we've done a couple types of factoring before, but we're going to continue one more today. So we're going to work on this chart as a bit of a warm-up and just as a bit of an intro. So we have some equations in factored form, and our goal is to get them in standard form. So in factored form, we have x plus m and x plus n. And the first thing we want to do is we want to identify our m and our n. So in this first example, we have m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2. Then we would go and we would expand this out to standard form. So what they've done here is they've just expanded that. So we took x plus 3 and x plus 2, and we have expanded this out. in order to get it in standard form. And once we have it in standard form, we're going to identify our B and our C. And how we get B and C is B is in front of our X or our middle term, and C is going to be our constant or our last term that does not have a variable. So this is exactly why putting things in order is so important. So we need to make sure all of our terms are in the right order or else we cannot identify B and C correctly. So we're going to do the second one. So for B, our M is negative four and our N is negative one. And now we're going to expand this to standard form. I'll do all of the steps again for this one. So we have X minus four and X minus one and we're going to expand that out. So make sure you draw all of your arrows just to avoid potential errors. And then we can collect some like terms. And that is what we write over here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to identify our B and our C. And once we have those, we're just going to write them over here. So now, what I want you to do is I want you to try to fill out the rest of the chart. So pause the video here, go through, fill out the rest of the chart until F, and then quickly check your answers because I'm going to put them all in here really, really quick and then you can check all of your answers and then we'll talk about some of the patterns and trends we found. And then we'll do G and H. Those ones we're going to do last.
So once you have your chart all ready to go, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at some relationships. So if I look here, when I have my M and my N, in order to get to my B, if I look at our second example B, we have negative four and negative one, and my B is negative five. If you look at all of our M and M's and then their associated B, we'll notice that M plus N is always equal to B, no matter what. And it will always work like this. The other pattern we want to look at is what is our relationship between M, N, and C? So if I look at example D, for example, we have negative two and five, and then our associated C value is negative 10. If I look at all my M and my Ns and how they're associated with C, they're always multiplied. So M and N are always multiplied to get C, no matter what. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do examples G and H, and we're going to use these patterns to work backwards. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my B and my C value. So for G, my B value is six, and my C value is one. So remember, our two numbers have to add to B and multiply to C. So we need to think about two numbers that multiply to six and add to five. In that case, we're going to have two and three. And if you're confused by how I'm finding these numbers, we're going to get into some more strategies shortly. Once I have those two numbers, I know that they're my M and my N, so I can just fill them into my brackets. So for example H, we're going to do the same thing. So we'll identify our B and our C. And now I need to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative one. And we'll have negative four and three. And then we just put them in the bracket. So now we're going to do some more examples and we're going to get into how we actually find these numbers because here in the chart you're working on just seeing it and sometimes you can't see it and they can be hard for some people's brains to find quickly. So we're going to go through some strategies. So we're going to work on example A, and we're going to do two different ways of factoring this. It's the same method, it's just how it's written out that's a little different. So I want to show you both so you can choose which one you want. It doesn't matter to me which one you choose because we're really doing the exact same thing in both, it's just the formatting that's a little different. So the first thing we're going to do no matter what, no matter which way we're going to factor, is we always start by identifying our B and our C. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that all of your variables are in the correct order. So in this case, we have x squared plus 5x minus 24. So it's all in the correct order. The next thing we want to do is we always want to see if we can common factor. So less than 4.4. So is there a greatest common factor of all of these? No. So we can't do that. And then I need to make sure my a value is one. So I need to make sure in front of that x, there's a one. So because we have all of those things, we're good to go. So let's identify our b and our c. And now we're going to start with our first method of writing this out. So we're gonna make ourselves a little chart. And we're gonna be looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 24, two numbers that add to five. So here's our strategy for how we find these numbers. There are far less options of numbers that multiply to 24. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all of the combinations of numbers that multiply to 24, and then we'll look at those combinations and see if there's any way we could have got five from those numbers. So we have one and 24, 
and there's no way I can get 5 by add or, adding or subtracting 1 and 24. We have 2 and 12. Again, there's no way I can get 5 from 2 and 12. And then I have 3 and 8. I can get 5 from 3 and 8. So those will be my numbers. So if I think of how I can get 5, I would 8 minus 3. And then what I do is I take 8 and negative 3, and I just put them here. So we had positive 8 and negative 3. And then, as usual, if I have extra time on a test or a quiz or something, I always check my answer. And because I got the same thing, I know I'm good to go. So that is option one of setting it up. Option two, we're going to do the exact same thing. The actual idea of what you're doing isn't any different, but some people find the setup of this a little bit easier. So the other way you can write it out is start by identifying your B and your C. Again, make sure it's in the right order. Make sure you can't come and factor. Make sure your A is equal to 1, just like we did before. And now I'm going to write it out like this. So I need two numbers that add to 5 and two numbers that multiply to negative 24. And again, we're going to start by looking at the combinations that multiply to negative 24. So I have 1 and 24. There's no way I can get 5 from that. I have 2 and 12. There's no way I can get 5 from that. And then I'll have 3 and 8. And I can get 5 from 3 and 8. So I'll have 8, negative 3, 8, negative 3. And then we're left with x plus 8 because the first number was positive 8 and the second number was negative 3. So that's your second option. It doesn't matter which one you choose. It's really whatever you prefer. We're going to try both again with these examples so you can choose which one works better for you. So let's try our second example. So for B, we have x squared minus 9x plus 18. So first thing, make sure they're in the right order. So I have x squared, and then an x, and then no variable. So I'm good to go. Second step, make sure I can't common factor. So again, I'm all set. And then I need to make sure my a is equal to 1. So because I have a 1 in front of that x squared, I'm all good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my b and my c. And now I can start factoring. So for this one, I'm going to use the man chart again. It's up to you, whichever one you want to do, but I just want to demonstrate both of them again, oops, so that everybody can see both methods multiple times. Okay, so two numbers that multiply to 18 and add to negative 9. So again, we always start with our multiplication. So we want to think of our combinations of numbers that multiply to 18, and then we want to think if there's any way we can get 9 from those. So we have 1 and 18. There's no way we can get 9 from those. We have 2 and 9. No way we can get 9 from those. And we have 3 and 6. So we can get 9 from 3 and 6. And we want negative 9. So we have negative 3 and negative 6 because they have to add to negative 9. If you're having trouble with where the negative goes, I'd recommend trying it in your calculator just to make sure you have everything in the right spot and our numbers are multiplying to 18 and adding to negative 9. So our numbers are negative 3 and negative 6, so we can just put those into the brackets. And then remember, if I have extra time, I always check my answer by multiplying it out. And we got the exact same thing, so we know that we are all set. 
So we're going to do another one. This time we're not going to use the man chart. We're going to use the blank plus blank blank times blank option. So again, we always start by looking at our equation and making sure everything's in the right order, which it is. We make sure that if we can common factor, that we've common factor. And then we make sure A is equal to one. So because it is, we can identify our B and our C. And then I can write out my blank. So I have blank plus blank equals B or the middle number. And I'm going to have blank times blank equals C, which is my last number. So again, I want to start by thinking of my options for the multiplication first. So I have 1 and 12. Is there any way I can get to 8 from those? No. I have 2 and 6. Is there any way I can get to 8 from those? Yes. So 2 plus 8, and two, sorry, 2 plus 6 and 2 times 6. And because those are my numbers, I can just put the positive 2 and the positive 6 into my equation. And our last one here, I'm going to do this blank plus blank method again because I think it's a little more straightforward, but it's absolutely up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. So again, I check, is it in the right order? Yes. Can I common factor? Nope. And is A equal to one? Yes, so I'm good to go. Identify my A and my, sorry, my B and my C. So I want two numbers that add to the middle number and two numbers that multiply to that last number. So now I look at the multiplication first. So I have one and 10, is there any way I can get seven from that? No. I have two and five, can I get seven from that? I can get seven from that. So I have two and five, two and five. But now I look, and does two plus five equal negative seven? No, so I have to make sure I have all of my negatives here. And now that I have my numbers, I had negative two, so that goes in the first bracket, and I have negative five, so that goes in the second bracket. So now what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you are going to work on the rest of the questions here, and all of the solutions will be posted for you.